You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. To paraphrase Benjamin Franklin, there are few certainties in life except death, taxes and Manchester United generating more revenue than any other Premier League club. But this truism has been recently shattered by United's noisy neighbours from the Etihad, after Manchester City published their financial results for 2020-21. When the Premier League commenced in 1992, the money generated by all clubs in the competition in its inaugural season was £205 million from 22 clubs less than Leicester City earned by themselves in the most recent season, in 2020-21. Manchester United won the Premier League in that first season by 10 points. United also had that season a significant advantage in terms of revenue, generating 44% more income over the second highest earning team, Liverpool, and more than twice as much as Premier League runners-up, Aston Villa. You see, the team had significant advantages at the start of the Premier League over other clubs. Old Trafford had a capacity of 44,000 in 92-93, and attendances averaged just 35,000, second to Liverpool that season, so the club had match day revenues to match. Where United excelled, however, was in respect of commercial income. Their income from this source was £10.7 million, more than twice that of Arsenal and four times of Liverpool. Manchester United was the most desirable brand in English football, and this was reflected in their ability to attract corporate guests to hospitality and extract maximum value from sponsors such as Sharp and Umbro, with United selling more shirts than any other team. With the reward of being in the Champions League in the 1993-94 season, Manchester United were able to sign Roy Keane for a record fee, and attendances at Old Trafford increased to average over 44,000 leapfrogging Liverpool by almost 6,000 fans. The increase in attendances, combined with regular success in qualifying for the Champions League, meant that United had a significant advantage over their Premier League rivals, as more money in meant more capacity to pay higher wages and transfer fees. This created a virtuous circle with the money invested in talent on the pitch generating continued interest in the club from the sale of tickets, commercial partners and broadcasters, which allowed the club to invest more in talent which then brought in more in revenues. Only once in the history of the league has a club who has not had a top three wage bill won the trophy, and that was of course Leicester City's 5,000 to 1 achievement in 2016. Man United, therefore, generated twice as much income as any other club in the league, on six occasions in the first eight years of the competition, winning the Premier League on six occasions too. The league's broadcast deal was another contributory factor in United keeping ahead of the competition. Under the distribution model agreed by club executives, half of the domestic broadcast rights were split evenly between clubs, with the other half being linked to the number of times a club was chosen for live broadcasts, and also the final league position. Clubs finishing bottom of the Premier League would receive one share of the merit payment pot of money. The club's second bottom, two shares, and so on until the winners received 20 shares with Manchester United finishing no lower than third until the 2013-14 season, the club were always recipients of high merit payment shares and also benefited from being one of the most popular picks for broadcasters. Now, by the time that the Glazer family acquired Manchester United in 2005 via a leveraged buyout, which saddled the club with £700 million of debt, they had generated over half a billion pounds in revenue. Nevertheless, the Glazers felt that the club had failed to realise its potential as a brand. Manchester United's commercial team started to focus on regional and national partner deals for individual products, and these proved popular as corporate companies wanted to share the attention that Manchester United generated from their on-field success and global fan base. As a result, commercial income increased almost five-fold in the first decade of the Glazers' ownership. Now, at Manchester City, in the first few years of their Premier League existence, things were much tougher. The club was relegated twice in the first decade of the Premier League and even had the ignominy of a season in the third tier. In the boardroom, a succession of owners failed to convert promises into sustained improvement on the pitch. And even a move to the new city of Manchester Stadium in 2003 did not make a significant difference as the club failed to compete in Europe's premier competitions. This, combined with a dedicated local fan base who were familiar with lower ticket prices rather than the benefits of tourist fans willing to pay higher sums, meant that it was difficult to generate additional revenue to compete. 
City were therefore generating about a third of the revenue of Manchester United until their world changed in September 2008 when Sheikh Mansour bought the club. Now, within a year, the club was being sponsored by Etihad Airways, and shortly after, the stadium naming rights were also acquired by the same organisation. City were now seen as genuine rivals. The funding meant that they incurred large losses as they invested heavily in playing talent, but in the days prior to financial fair play, these losses came with no penalties, provided the owner was willing to underwrite them. City finished third in the Premier League in 2010-11, qualifying for the Champions League, and this helped the club to sign more lucrative sponsor deals, often in the Middle Eastern market. By the time Manchester City won the Premier League in 2012-13, revenue had more than tripled in less than five years, and the gap between the two Manchester clubs had fallen from 192 million to 92 million. Winning the Premier League once was great for City. But in order to attract more lucrative deals, the club had to keep its popularity with sponsors by creating more of a dynasty. The recruitment of Pep Guardiola in 2016 helped to achieve that, preceding a consistent flow of silverware. In the meantime, things at Old Trafford were becoming more modest, both on and off the pitch. Vice Chairman Ed Woodward was quoted at a shareholder meeting as saying that playing performance doesn't really have a meaningful impact on what we can do on the commercial side of the business. However, the lack of investment in the infrastructure at Old Trafford has resulted in matchday income flatlining over the last decade, and the lack of trophies since the retirement of Sir Alex Ferguson has coincided with no growth recently in commercial income either. COVID-19 first impacted the Premier League in March 2020, with matches being postponed and pushed back until after the financial year end of June 30th. This hurt Manchester United more than Manchester City, as United generate twice as much money as City from this source due to a combination of bigger ground capacity, more hospitality offerings, and also a bigger tourist element in the fan base who are willing to pay higher ticket prices. Even so, United still had a £31 million income advantage over their rivals. But the results for 2020-21 are, however, a first instance of a club generating more revenue than Manchester United. The season taking place behind closed doors meant that Old Trafford contributed only a tiny fraction of the usual £110 million per year in ticket receipts. City of course suffered the same fate, but their reduction in income was only about £55 million. In terms of broadcast income, City won the Premier League and made the final of the Champions League in 2020-21. Whilst fans at Old Trafford might claim that they generate higher viewing figures because broadcast money is linked, especially in UEFA competitions, to progress in the Champions League, it means that City have generated more money from this source since 2015. And if there's another Premier League title won by the team in light blue, this could continue in 2021-22 as well. Man United have reported a dip in commercial earnings in 2021, as the club gave sponsors Chevrolet an extra six months of exposure on their shirts for a relatively low sum, as an acknowledgement of the disruption caused by the pandemic. No such deal was struck by Manchester City with Etihad Airways. As a consequence, City's commercial income increased to £272 million in 2021, whilst United's fell to £232 million as the extended Chevrolet deal, combined with a decline in merchandise sales due to the pandemic, hit this income source. Now, whether City can sustain this advantage is questionable. Man United will have the benefit of a full Old Trafford for the 21-22 season to boost match day and merchandise earnings, as well as making the knockout stages of the Champions League. But City's ability to generate more and more sponsors on the back of regular trophies will help their cause. City generating more money than United could therefore give fans bragging rights in terms of revenue for one year only, but there's certainly more potential competition from elsewhere. Spurs now have the potential to have the highest grossing matchday income in the Premier League with their multi-purpose, relatively future-proof new stadium, and Liverpool are reaping the rewards of success on the pitch with having highly desirable assets from a marketing perspective in the likes of Jurgen Klopp and Mo Salah. So, the challenge to Manchester United is coming from more than one place. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is where the Ralph Rangnick to Manchester United story broke, where a team of journalists have provided unrivaled coverage of Newcastle United's new ownership and where dedicated writers cover every Premier League team no matter their place in the table. And you can try it free now for 30 days.